an insider takes a great risk in seeking to expose that. And when I am speaking today, let me, sir, at the very outset, pay my profound homage to Satendra Dube, the courageous engineer of National Highway Authority of India, who was exposing the corruption in the construction of National Highway in my own state of Bihar and was killed. When I am speaking on this bill, let me pay my homage to Manjunath, that sales executive of the Indian Oil Corporation, a graduate of IIM, who was exposing adulteration in fuel in near Lucknow in Uttar Pradesh and was killed. Let me pay my homage to Kalol Sur, that brave block development officer of Bengal, who was exposing the scam in NRAG and was found to be dead in very mysterious <coughs> circumstances. About nine or ten RTI activists have to pay with their life. Therefore, I begin with a homage to them. Sir, our democracy day after tomorrow would become exactly 65 years old. As I see, <coughs> these 65 years have been years of learning. These 65 years have been years of ups and downs. And if I very briefly reflect upon the growth of our democratic process, there was a one-party rule. For good measure, they were winning the elections. <coughs> then, in states, non-Congress party started occupying the political space. And thereafter, the people realized the worth of their vote. And today, they know that we can defeat any political party, howsoever powerful, any political leader, howsoever popular, from their seat to the power of their vote. So I always feel, as an activist from the very beginning, this has led to a very sobering influence on our democratic policy. It has stabilized our democracy. The people of the country know there shall be no military coup in India. The people of the country know, in view of the very, I would say, extraordinary experience of 70s, no leader, howsoever popular, would seek to impose uh, emergency in the country impose press censorship, address people without trial in every brazen way. Now, sir, with this establishment of our democratic polity, the voters recognize that they support a political party consistent with their ideology or support base. And they, in turn, become, try to understand the identity of India. Sir, I am a great believer in the democratic power of our people. And the best thing I recognize, sir, I was present in the House, then I was a minister in the Bajpayee government, that from Punjab, a, a political activist has been elected, who never believed in the identity of India, who never believed in Indian constitution. But the day the people gave him mandate, he was taking his oath under the Indian constitution. This is the great sobering experience of the working of our democracy, which we have experienced. Therefore, we are very proud of our democracy. Sir, democratic process cannot survive only in the context of opposition and uh, uh, party in the government. Democracy means political process. Democratic means non-political process. And all those processes, in one way or the other, strengthen the cause of democracy. I remember when the public interest litigation came about, sir, there was a lot of doubt as to what is happening and why it is happening. I remember, sir, in my days in Patna when I used to practice there, I was a whistleblower myself. This whole fodder scam case was argued by me in the PIL. Then I was a small known lawyer, not a known political leader. The entire bitumen scam was argued by me. Uh, all right, I stand corrected. Will you allow me to argue, please speak? For heaven's sake. It is a serious matter. The Goa issue will talk separately. <laughs> Sir, then there was a lot of apprehension. But political process, non-political process, both are working together. And therefore, 
I also salute a large number of NGOs who over the years have articulated the cause of our democracy. People used to say, court is interfering too much. Maybe to some extent right. I have always felt court has got no business to intervene in the executive government of the day. The right to govern the country would be given to the government of the day, the state or in the country. Yes, violation of fundamental right, violation of human right, case of gross corruption, court must and should intervene. And that is how the democracy has become strengthened over the years. Now, sir, in this whole quest of governance, accountability is important. And for accountability to come, transparency and integrity is equally important. You cannot have the element of good governance. You cannot have constructive accountability if you jettison integrity and probity. Yes, today India is growing. Growing very well. We see a very aspirational India, young people having a dream, young graduates, hard working, a lot of perseverance. But they also get disheartened when they see the present image of the country. Sir, I keep on traveling in the country, I interacting with young people. I keep on going abroad. Hardly a month ago I was in the States, sir. The kind of writings I heard about, the kind of negative image I heard about, was certainly disturbing for me as an Indian. We have to rise above these things. And in exposure of all these massive scams and corruption, sir, the whistleblowers have played a very crucial role. I don't know Chandan Mishra is here or not. Sir, in the Pioneer newspaper, Gopi Krishna was consistently writing articles about what is happening in the 2G. And because I was a member of that then IT standing committee, I was following it closely. We tried to do our best, but could not succeed. That is a separate chapter altogether. I will discuss with you in the chamber as to what happened and why it happened. But he kept on writing. He was threatened. And ultimately, when the whole 2G became very explosive, ultimately people started listening to him. And he was also given a CNN IBN award for the best journalist. I asked him one day, what happened Gopi? Congratulations. Ka, there was a whistleblower in the department of telecom who was my source. And he had become so fed up as to what is happening. Therefore, he used to give me. I give my regard to the whistleblower for exposing some of the biggest corruption in contemporary history of India. The same is the case of Commonwealth. The other thing. I am not being partisan today. But what is important is, if maladministration or corruption or abuse of power is exposed, one should not take it in a negative way as to impinging upon the government of the day. I would see it as a kind of a warning that please usher in course correction. So our democracy is so strong today, today they are in power, tomorrow maybe we can come to power, and then we are there. This exchange will keep on going, and that is the flow of democracy. But there, are, there is certain fundamental obligation which we owe to the country, to the people of the country, and to posterity. And that is, we must leave an India which is strong, resurgent, accountable. And in that process, sir, today's bill I see as a moment of great historic opportunity. It is in that larger context that I was seeking to elevate this debate. And there has been a trinity. The first was right to information. The second was Lokpal. We wish, Honourable Minister, your government bring at the earliest. Today is a select committee meeting. I hope it is expedited. And this session itself, the Lokpal bill comes to this. And the third is whistleblower. Therefore, this whole process is very important. Sir, when I was a young student, school student, sir, the first question of whistleblower we heard very vaguely was about deep throat in the great Watergate scandal you must have learned about. There were a story and a story and finally the very arrogant imperial US President Nixon had to bow down from office. 